Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we just got back from Richmond, Virginia. Katie and I went up for a two-day pre-practice trip, so two days on the road, two days uh, on the water, or at least I was on the water. Katie actually had to stay at, back at the campground because she's not allowed to go fishing with me um, it, during you know this off-limits period. Uh, but yeah, great trip. Really looking forward to that event because uh, the James River is such a unique fishery. I've never been to a fishery quite like it. And I thought that it would resemble a place like the Potomac River uh, that's not that far away from there. But it really didn't. It, it, other than it being a tidal fishery as well, um, that's pretty more, much where the similarities end. Uh, because there wasn't as much submergent grass. It's totally different type of submergent grass. Uh, there's there's types of emergent like lily pads I've never seen before. So I was really glad to make that trip and go up there and scout out a little bit. So really looking forward to that event. But the reason I wanted to do this video is because Katie had to kind of boondock it this week, this weekend. Uh, uh, it was Memorial Day weekend. We could not find a campsite with full hookups, which is usually a necessity, but since we were only doing this for a couple days, we figured, you know, hey, we could get a just a tent site without water or electric and be all right. We've got 45 gallons of fresh water capacity in the Lance 975, so water wasn't an issue at all. Um, the, you know, the, the biggest thing that we were concerned about was keeping things cooled down inside. Of course, we had Katie that was staying back all day uh, and with the with Doppler and, uh, you know, so obviously they needed to stay cool. For the most part, the Battleborn batteries run the fans fine. And we were kind of in the shade uh, and uh, and you could open these windows, turn on the fan on the, on the top, that vent fan, and it keeps things cooled down pretty good. But in the, the, the middle of the day, when the sun is beating down on this, this rig right here, it can get a little bit hot. So um, we would have to turn on the generator. Uh, we've got a built-in propane generator on this line 975. It is a godsend for those really, really hot summer days. 2,500 uh, watt generator. Uh, I've actually done a, a video on how to do the oil change. I love this generator. Um, and so, you know, I was, I was kind of thinking, when I bought this generator, there was only like seven hours on it. And it had, it had been already, you know, a two-year-old camper by that point. And I've also been in a lot of other people's campers and there's no hours on the generator. And I, you know, I find that kind of odd because, uh, and I feel, and I've talked to a couple people and they say, well, I just don't want to use it. You know, I, I, I just don't want to wear it out um, or, you know, just use it if I don't have to. And I agree with the sentiment, you know, not using it if you don't have to. However, one thing that, that I know about generators is they like to be used. They, they are designed to be used. Uh, they, they can run for thousands of hours if taken care of properly, and, uh, and they're just awesome. So, you know, uh, one of the things that, that uh, we do a lot is we travel cross country, and if we're staying you're just in a parking lot somewhere, and it's, it, it's summertime, it's hot, or we need to use a microwave or something like that, we will run this generator and we've got like 91 hours on it now, which, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot of use. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to do this video to kind of discuss it a little bit because I, I find it's kind of funny. I, I want to know, do you guys use your, your generators that are built into uh, the truck campers? Because I think you should. Even if you don't have a use for your generator, if you've had your camper for a couple of years, it's probably a really, really good idea to check the oil number one and then use the generator. A generator, uh, you know, especially, um, uh, you know, one that hasn't been used for a while, you need to use it and you need to put a load on it. You know, turn the, turn the generator on, let it run in, in your, your uh, driveway or something like that for a little bit turn the AC on uh, and uh, and just let it sit for 
30, 45 minutes. But uh, that's one thing I've learned in Alaska. You know, a lot of times, you know, these these uh, these boats have these big generators and they need a load put on them, uh, you know, pretty much constantly. And so it's really, really good idea to, just as far as maintenance, to make sure that your, your generator, uh, you know, will perform for, for many years and, and many thousands of hours is to, to use it, put a load on it. And I pretty much do that, you know, every month I make it a point to, as, as you know, part of my maintenance schedule that I do on all my equipment is to unplug the, the, uh, the shore power here, you can see, and then go ahead, turn on the generator. Uh, first I check the oil. You know, you always want to check the oil, especially if you haven't used it for a while. And uh, make sure that you, you check out that video that I did on the oil change. So turn on the, the generator after you check the oil, put a load on it, and let it run. The biggest thing that you want to make sure when you're using this generator is that you pay attention to what you're using. Now, when it comes to a 2,500 watt generator, you can pretty much run the AC or the microwave uh, at the same or you can't do it at the same time you have to do one or the other but pretty much everything else unless you're plugging in like a hair dryer or a uh, hair straightener or something like that if you're using those type of high uh you know uh, th those those type of things that require a lot of wattage that's when you want to go ahead and turn the ac off not use the microwave and just use those items same thing with like a coffee maker whenever i'm using the keurig in the camper i turn off any of the other high usage items and uh and just use that one so it's kind of a balancing act with the generator but man it is a it is a godsend when you're dealing with uh, especially hot weather now in the winter time i rarely use the generator because the Battleborn batteries are so good at keeping everything working. You know, the, the, the fridge goes off of propane, the, uh, the, the furnace runs excellent off of Battleborn batteries and never have any issues, uh, you know, overnight or, you know, a couple days. Lights, the TV system, the entertainment system, all of that stuff works off those Battleborn batteries. But during the summertime, the generator is the deal. So anyways, this was kind of a video to kind of discuss that because if you have a camper and you're reluctant to use your generator, even if you're not actually using it because you don't boondock it that often, please make sure that you turn it on, put a load on it to keep it running perfect. Uh, if not for you, for the next owner. But um, also again, check out that video I did on the oil change of this Cummins Onan 2500. Anyways, guys, those are just some of my thoughts on using a, a, a generator. Do you like to use your generator that's built into your RV or truck camper? I want to hear your comments about what I was talking about below. And uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to see you on the road and out on the water.